Barashi, Bara, Elohim, Et, Hashamim, Vaet, Ha, Eret. This is in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. When we're done with this class, you're going to be able to read Hebrew. You're not just going to speak it, and then when it's written somewhere, you ain't going to know what's going on. Not only will you learn how to read Hebrew, I'm going to show you how to read Biblical Hebrew. I'm going to show you how to read Modern Hebrew. And I'm going to show you how to read Ancient Hebrew. And you'll know how to compare and contrast and know the distinctions. Like for instance, you have Barashi, right? Ba. This is a B in Hebrew. The B is used as a prefix. This is the same word they use for Genesis for the most part. Like Boratius or Barashit. You have different tongues too. You have the Sephardic and the Ashkenazic tongue. Barashit. The vowel is at the bottom. So this produces an A sound. Ba. This is Shav. Right? And this tells us, this kind of works like the Arabic Sakum. This tells us this is one syllable by itself. Boom, stop right there. Then start pronouncing the rest of the word as you go. That's what this tells us. This is what the shav tells us. It's a shav. This tells us to go ba. Then say the rest. Rashid. Some say racist. We're going to go over who are the people saying these things and why are they saying it. Because this stuff is modified. This is the real deal right here. So this is the first verse in the book of Genesis. First sentence in the book of Genesis, or the first verse, says, Barashi bara Elohim, et ha shamayim va'et ha aret. This is in the beginning, just one word. Because to us, this looks like one word. But the B is used as a prefix, which means in or inside, or this B right here also represents what? House, as in bait. This letter is called bet or bait, depending if it's ancient or modern. A bait is a house in Hebrew. You'll find a lot of the letters are named after the actual things they represent. What is so significant about a house? A house makes a distinction between that which is on the outside and that which is on the inside. If you have a house, it creates an internal world called domestication. And then you got the social world on the outside. So the B represents a prefix, means in or inside. So when you see the B at the beginning of a word, you can identify it as a prefix on most occasions. Then you have this here. This gives you Rosh. The race mean Rosh represents head. Rosh is the word for head in Hebrew. This is your R. This is your A, O, or I. We'll go through that later on. And this is your Sheen. But this right here is head. And earlier I showed you the meanings of the letters, but we're going to go through it hard. I'm gonna be, if you've got the workbook, it's going to be easier to work through. So I'm trying to prepare people to have the workbook so I can say, turn the page such and such so we can move forward. That's what this class is about to forewarn you what you're going to have to be doing during class. You're going to have to be able to turn to page such and such. So we can move forward and then I'm going to have some kind of um, printout sometimes because I know how people do in school. They leave their materials home and then there we go with the crap. You know what I'm saying? And you're going to need your materials. So Roche means head. So you have in the head. No, in the head is what? Beginning. How? Because in the head you conceptualize. Conception takes place in two ways. Through thinking. You give birth to thoughts, or you give birth to physical beings. So since conception takes place in the head, they use the word head and amalgamate with the bait to say in the conception, in the beginning, which means this was a thought. It was mental first before anything was produced physically. We got to get into the Hebrew state of mind, not the modern English, acidic state of mind. So they use the word rosh, and prefix the letter B or base to it to tell you in the conception or the, like your conception is considered the beginning of your life. So the best translation they felt suffice was in the beginning because you have in being baked and roast. So it was 
in the beginning. Or in the conception, because conception takes place in the mind first. For anything to be produced physically, it first has to be conceived in the head before it's conceived physically. So this is why we're going to learn how to navigate through biblical scripture. In the beginning, bara means create. We're going to go for what the kamats is and the patak and all these other vowels that you see at the bottom. We're not going to do that now. Bara. This means create. Or he created as some like to accept it, but that's not necessarily true. They were playing games. Okay, and this is <laughs> Ilhi. This means those judges, but it's, many people say God. And really, it's, it's not singular, it's gods. Because when you see these two letters here in this order at the end of a word, this denotes pluralization. So the word is Elah, which means God or judge. When you have a Yod and Mim at the end of a word, this denotes pluralization which gives you Elohim. So you have Elohim. Y'all say it, Elohim. 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 Say, it, say it like you are God, or you came from one. Elohim. 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 So say it, Barashit. Barashit. Go ahead, say shit, you can say it, Barashit. Barashit. Because when you go in other languages, you can curse it, it's perfectly legal, you don't have to worry about it. So Barashit. Barashit. Bara. Bara Elohim. Elohim. Let's do it. Barashit Bara Elohim. Barashit Bara Elohim. Barashit Bara Elohim. Barashit Bara Elohim. Emphasize the shit like you gotta go. Come on. You know, when you get closer to the house, it starts coming down. You start feeling the pressure. You're on the train, you start sweating. You start leave, seeping out the gas first. It comes out in the gas form. The closer you get to the house. So you gotta come in with the Barashit. Barashit. There we go. Barashit, bara Elohim. Barashit, bara Elohim. And some will say Barashit. Okay. Barashit, bara Elohim. Barashit, bara Elohim. Roll that off. Barra. Barashit. 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 Bara Elohim. Elohim. And if you notice, they got the noun here first. So they got in the beginning, God created. You see how that works? They put create first. Then they put God. So they prepare you for what that person is doing before you introduce to the person. So the noun is going to come after that adjective. It's going to come after the descriptory word. So you had, in the beginning, created God. That's how it, that's what was written. In the, in the beginning, created God. But it really says in the beginning. It's to be interpreted as in the beginning or in the conception of things, God created. Then you got this thing here that's not in English. It's called et. Et. Ha. This is a prefix. When you see this at the beginning of a word, this means the. This vowel gives you the A sound, but this is a hey. means when this A is at the bottom or this vowel is at the bottom, it gives you ha. Okay? So you have, if this was under it, this would be, pardon me, if it was here, this would be hit. So this is ha. You read from right to left and from up to, and to down. Everything you look at is from right to left, then up to down. You go in that direction. So when you see this as a prefix, this is going to be the precursor to prepare you to not interpret this H as a word that begins with H. You understand what I'm saying? This means the. Like the Jews say, I don't want to call on God's name, so I'm going to call on Hashem, which means the name. Shem means name. So they say Hashem, Ha is the. So they will put a Hey there at the beginning, then they will have Shem there. It would be this Hashem. Right? Which means spaceship in another language. We ain't gonna go there. That's why this means heavens. That's a whole other story. But anyway, you have Ha, which means the. But sometimes the word might begin with a Hey. So what this does, it tells you the H that's coming is the word the and then read the rest of the word. So this is oftentimes interpreted as the, but this is the way to write the. This just prepares you for the definite article. 
So this is et, but et is defined as the as well. But there's no word like this in English. This is to forewarn you that this will be a prefix that means the. Because otherwise you might misconstrue what's being said if you can't make a distinction fast during the course of speaking or reading. If this is a the, or if this is just a word that has H at the beginning. You need to be able to understand if this is the. You understand what I'm saying? X is here because this means the. If this didn't mean the, it was just a word that begins with hey, this wouldn't be here. Got it? So this is a form of a tense in Hebrew that we're going to talk about later on. So this is ha shamayim, which means what? The heavens. Ha shamayim. And this is also a prefix, which is vav. This is a prefix that's vav. Today it's called wow. This means and. When you see this prefix to a word, it means and. So notice this is the same word. But you have the vowel prefix to it, which means what? Enver. But the trick is to know that the only reason this is here is because the next word is going to begin with what? A hey, that means the. You have ha eret. Ha eret. The earth. Eret means earth, but this means the. The word is here. Eret. Eret. This is Aleph, this is Resh, and this is Sardin. So you have He, Aleph, Resh, and Sardin. And this gives you the earth. Ha eret. Ha eret. Even with the vowel underneath it, that's different from or distinct from the one that's before the, um, the same first one? Yes. One is, one, one is an emphasis. One is a longer A sound, one is a shorter A sound. So the T is a longer A sound. Yeah. Ha eret. Ha eret. And we're also going to have to go into what closed and open syllables are. Because these are cousins. You see these dots here? If you play connected dots, you see this here. These are cousins. One denotes closed syllable, one denotes open syllable. Open syllable, closed syllable. So you traditionally find them in the same points of words. Like you know, the sound stops, the sound opens up. The sound is open to have another sound come in, or the sound is closed, and all the sounds come in. You start from scratch, the next sound coming out. So you got high that. So there you go. So you got Barashi Bara Elohim. Et ha shamayim va'et ha eret. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And you see and the, and you know that this is in, and you know this is the head conceptualizes. So they got in the conception or in the beginning. You know this is plural because the yard and me. Bara, you know that they're gonna put this word and prefix it to the noun first. They're gonna prefix what the noun is actually doing. So say it with me the whole sentence now. We got Barashit. 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 Barra. 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 Let me go. Barra. 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 Barashit. Barra. Barra. Elohim. 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 Et. Et. Hashemayim. 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 Go a little harder with breathing. Hashemayim. Do that breath that you really don't want to do in front of people's face. <laughs> but you're going to have to learn how to do that. Now. Because you want your heart to contract. You want to produce the right frequencies. You want to be felt. Hashemayim. 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 Vaet, like Ryan said, Vaet, 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 Do like that. Vaet, Vaet, Put your teeth on top your tongue. Just like that. Put your teeth on top your tongue to say et. So say Bae. That's the way you pronounce it. Bae. And I'll show you why you have to pronounce it like that. 
high at it. This is like a TS. This is how this letter normally is transliterated. TS. High at it. It's like a sizzling sound. High at it. High at it. High at it. High at it. of each of the letters and how to know which letters correspond with which planets to find out what is your name based on your astrological chart. We're going to be doing all of that in this class to make sure everybody is on point. So I'd like to thank everybody and just remind you, these are the books we're going to need for class because when we start next week into the healing modalities of the language, when we start next week, we are going to be working out of these books intensely. So I want to be able to say, turn the page, this, that, and third. And if you don't got the book, then I'll just give you, you know, some books for people that just walking in or people that may uh, irresponsibly left their books or people that didn't get the books yet. I make sure that we have some more deck that you can use for class and you can share with the person who's more responsible. You know how we are as people. When we get our stuff, we don't be wanting to share. So, you know, but um, get these because you're going to learn. And I got Hebrew rhymes. I actually got the whole first chapter of the book of Genesis and I wrapped it up in Hebrew. So you can commit it to memory. So I, you know, I, I, I do a lot of stuff so you can learn the language, and it's real fun. And that's why my baby girl adopted the languages so fast because I put everything into like rhythmic aspects, and it's real nice when you got it in tones and in rhythm. And it's in a and it's in a song. You remember everything, right? So that's what we're gonna do. Plus, you have the.